This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelly Waller. Moral support and military aid. The US Secretary of State and the US Defense Secretary meet President Zelensky in Kyiv. It is the highest level American visit since Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, we don't know how the rest of this war will unfold, but we do know that a sovereign, independent Ukraine will be around a lot longer than Vladimir Putin's on the scene. Russia targets Ukraine's rail infrastructure in the center and west of the country. We'll have all the latest from our teams in Ukraine. Our other main headline on today's Global. World leaders congratulate Emmanuel Macron after winning a second term as French president. His task now to unite a divided country. My friends, we will need to be kind and respectful because our country harbors many doubts and divisions. So we will need to be strong. Nick Beek, live in Paris. Emmanuel Macron has become the first French president in 20 years to win a second term in office. But he knows that many voted for him only to keep out the far right candidate. Fears of lockdown in the Chinese capital Beijing promote panic buying as the government starts testing millions of residents. And the world's richest man makes a final offer to buy Twitter. Elon Musk offers to pay $43 billion for the platform. Hello and welcome to BBC News. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, says Russia is trying to brutalise parts of Ukraine but is failing in all of its war aims. He was speaking of a visiting Kyiv in talks with President Zelensky. Also there was the American Defence Secretary, Lloyd Austin, who talked of wanting to see Russia weaken to avoid a repeat of Ukraine. Nick, live there in Paris, thanks very much for that. Now, still to come on today's programme, Panic buying in Beijing after a surge in COVID cases and mass testing. We report from the Chinese capital. Welcome back to today's Global here on BBC World News. Our main story here, the US Defense Secretary says he wants to see Russia weakened so it can't repeat its actions in Ukraine. Lloyd Austin was speaking after a trip to Kyiv with the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. Now, Ethiopia's 17-month-old civil war has left thousands dead and millions in need of aid. A humanitarian truce between the government and Tigrayan rebels has been hailed as an important step towards finding a resolution. Just the latest on Ukraine before we take a break, because Reuters is reporting that uh, one of Russia's representatives at the UN saying today that Moscow sees no point in establishing a ceasefire in Ukraine at this stage, fearing that Kyiv might use it to stage, quote, provocations. We know the UN Secretary General heading both to Kyiv and to Moscow, pleading for a four day truce. But that looks as if uh, that plea is going nowhere. More here in just a moment or two. In our connected world, all news is international. So, for in-depth analysis... The impact on Europe and the rest of the world would be devastating. And correspondents covering both home and global events... Get a deeper understanding and find out what is really going on. BBC World News America. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelly Waller. Moral support and military aid. The US Secretary of State and the US Defense Secretary meet President Zelensky in Kyiv. It is the highest level American visit since Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, we don't know how the rest of this war will unfold, but we do know that a sovereign, independent Ukraine will be around a lot longer than Vladimir Putin's on the scene. Russia targets Ukraine's rail infrastructure in the center and the west of the country. 
We'll be speaking live to a group that's trying to help Ukrainians who've been forcibly deported to Russia. Ukraine says that number is now over half a million. Also in today's Global. World leaders congratulate Emmanuel Macron after winning a second term as French president. His task now to unite a divided country. My friends, we will need to be kind and respectful because our country harbors many doubts and divisions. So we will need to be strong. And the world's richest man makes a final offer to buy Twitter. Elon Musk offers to pay $43 billion for the platform. Welcome back to the program and straight back to Ukraine because the US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says he wants Russia to be weakened so it can't repeat its actions in Ukraine. He made the remarks after a trip to Kyiv with the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Meanwhile, Russia launched a series of strikes on critical infrastructure targets right across Ukraine. Jenny Hill there in Moscow. Let's pause from that. Let's catch up with the business news of the day. Ramzan is here with more on that news about Twitter and Elon Musk. Yes, there's no secret. He's made his feelings quite clear actually on Twitter that he wants to take over Twitter. Let's kick off with that story. He says it's his best and final offer. That's Elon Musk. He's the world's richest man. He's calling his $43 billion bid for Twitter. And multiple sources say the company is going to cave. His offer makes one share of Twitter worth $54.20. And a deal could be announced later this Monday, according to reports. And that was Yael Selfin from KPMG. And as she was saying, it's the Chinese effect that's having an impact on the markets all down. Just look at Brent crude down around 6.5%. And that's all based on... You know, this tie to restrictions are uh, COVID restrictions in China. And that's all the business. Back to you, Matthew. Well done. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Now, do stay with us because still to come on today's programme, Amsterdam is trying to clean up its image. We report on why the authorities want to ban tourists from the cannabis coffee shops. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Now, mass burials are expected to take place in the coming hours for dozens of victims of a huge explosion at an illegal, illegal oil refinery in the southeast of Nigeria. The death toll is climbing, with officials now saying at least 110 people, including a pregnant woman, were killed. Azadeh Mashiri has this report. Now, before we take a break, uh, we were talking only a short while ago about President Putin lashing out in comments earlier in the day. I want to just uh, show you some pictures from the west of Russia of this uh, fire in the western city of Bryansk, 150 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. Uh, no official comment about what caused the fire, but the governor of the neighboring Russian region of Kursk said that two Ukrainian drones were shot down on Monday close to the border town there. So uh, those some of the pictures and perhaps an explanation of some of the words uh, from Vladimir Putin a little earlier. As I say, live in Kyiv here in just a moment or two. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. Russia's unrelenting attack on the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine. The grim reality after years of fighting, we have a special report from our defence correspondent. What has been sporadic fighting over the last eight years has now turned into a full-blown war. And they are being pounded by Russian artillery. America's Defense Secretary and Secretary of State meet President Zelensky in Kyiv. It is the highest level U.S. visit since Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, we don't know how the rest of this war will unfold, but we do know that a sovereign, independent Ukraine will be around a lot longer than Vladimir Putin's on the scene. 
It comes as Russia targets Ukraine's rail infrastructure in the center and the west of the country. We have all the latest from our teams in Ukraine. Our other main headline on today's programme. World leaders congratulate Emmanuel Macron after winning a second term as French president. His task now is to unite a divided country. My friends, we will need to be kind and respectful because our country harbours many doubts and divisions. So we will need to be strong. And fears of lockdown in the Chinese capital, Beijing, promote panic buying as the government starts testing millions of residents. Hello and welcome back to BBC News. Five train stations in central and western Ukraine have been struck by Russian missiles. The railways have become a key target for Russian forces as they're crucial for both bringing in supplies and evacuating civilians. The number of injured or killed isn't yet known. It follows last month's attack on a station in eastern Ukraine which left 50 people dead, many civilians trying to flee the fighting. Now, do stay with us because still to come here on today's Global, panic buying in Beijing after a surge in COVID cases and mass testing. We report from China's capital. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Now, Ethiopia's 17-month-old civil war has left thousands dead and millions in need of aid. A humanitarian truce between the government and Degrayan rebels has been hailed as an important step towards finding a resolution. Well, in the historic town of Lalibela, the war and the COVID pandemic have left many without their livelihoods. Kalkadan Yibatal has this report. Well, in our next edition of Global, we'll have all the latest from Kiev. We'll also be in the US, uh, Johnny Depp's uh, defamation case uh, against his uh, former wife, Amber Heard. Uh, he continues to give evidence. We'll hear from our correspondent, David Silito. All of that here in half an hour's time. Hopefully, I'll see you then. Bye for now. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's Global, the war in Ukraine enters its third month. We report from the east where people are forced to live underground. Well, this is how many Ukrainians are surviving, scared, exhausted, desperate for the war to end. My brain hurts. Two idiots are fighting. Two old men. All of them are guilty. All of them. Across Ukraine, five railway stations have been struck by Russian missiles. The number of dead or injured is not yet known. America's Secretary of State and Defense Secretary meet President Zelensky in Kyiv, the highest level U.S. visit since Russia invaded. Uh, we don't know how the rest of this war will unfold, but we do know that a sovereign, independent Ukraine will be around a lot longer than Vladimir Putin's on the scene. We'll have all the latest from our teams in Ukraine. Our other main headlines on today's programme. Has Elon Musk's $43 billion bid to buy Twitter been accepted? We'll have the latest. And world leaders congratulate Emmanuel Macron after winning a second term as French president. His task now is to unite a divided country. My friends, we will need to be kind and respectful because our country harbours many doubts and divisions. So we will need to be strong. A 
Hello and welcome back to BBC News. Five train stations in central and western Ukraine have been struck by Russian missiles. The railways have become a key target for Russian forces as they're crucial for bringing both supplies in and evacuating civilians. Now, still to come on today's programme, the actor Johnny Depp is giving evidence in a defamation case against his ex-wife Amber Heard. He's told the court today that the only person he's abused is himself. We'll have more on that in just a moment. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main stories here as the renewed Russian offensive in the east of Ukraine continues, exhausted residents are forced to live underground. The US Defense Secretary says he wants to see Russia weakened so it can't repeat its actions in Ukraine. Lloyd Austin was speaking after a trip to Kyiv with the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. Now to the US, because the Hollywood actor Johnny Depp has told a court that the only person he's abused is himself. Depp is giving evidence in a defamation case against his ex-wife Amber Heard. The actor is suing Amber Heard for an article she wrote in which she described herself as a victim of domestic violence. Well, one more story to bring you. For the first time in two years, Australia and New Zealand have held large-scale events on Anzac Day. Both countries had to cancel or limit memorial services in the previous years because of the coronavirus pandemic. The event commemorates the failed Allied assault on the Gallipoli Peninsula in the First World War. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said the war in Ukraine was a most grim reminder of the fragile nature of peace and the devastating impact of war. Well, that brings us to the end of today's Global. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully, I'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Bye-bye. BBC World News, the biggest African and international news stories. Focus on Africa. This is Focus on Africa. I'm Lucrezia Burak. Our top stories. Yet another deadly explosion at an illegal oil refinery. 110 dead and more than 70 injured in southeastern Nigeria. The president declares a national disaster. A return to violence in Sudan as the UN calls for an investigation after at least 168 people are killed in clashes in the rest of Darfur region. Also, Ethiopia's ancient city known as the Second Jerusalem. The people of Lalibela weathering the economic impacts of civil war and a global pandemic. And no entry to the world's deadliest creature. But is it really as simple as moving house in the fight against malaria? And Mimi has the sport as Angolan side Petro Atletico book their place in the African Champions League semi-finals for the first time in 21 years. Hello and welcome to Focus on Africa coming to you from BBC World News. And we start the programme in Nigeria where the National Emergency Management Agency says that mass burials are due to take place for dozens of victims of a huge explosion at an illegal oil refinery. Friday's blast, which occurred in the southeastern state of Imo, killed at least a hundred people and injured some 70, some of whom remain in a critical condition. Now, you're watching um, Focus on Africa. Stay with us because Mimi is coming up with all the sport as Uganda clinched the men's rugby sevens title and on home soil. Uh, welcome back. Uh, now, um, I've had it as uh, a child. I think we've got a, a picture. Don't laugh. Um, let's have a look. I think 
it's going to come up. Actually, here it is behind me. Um, I was under the age of five when I contracted this particular disease. Luckily, I survived. Couldn't say the same for a lot of other people. Now, for many, malaria is an accepted part of life on the continent. Not everyone is lucky. In fact, the disease accounts for more than one million deaths every year. And according to the WHO, Africa carries a disproportionate burden. Most are children. In fact, malaria remains the largest cause of childhood illness and deaths in sub-Saharan Africa. So the second Jerusalem, who knew? Uh, you're watching Focus on Africa and it's time for the first of this week's sports. Hello to you, Mimi. Hello, Lucrezia. Good to see See you. We start with the African Champions League and Angolan side Petro Atletico say can still do more after their shock win over South Africa's Mamelodi Sundowns in the quarterfinals. And of course, lots more sport on the BBC Sport Africa page. Luquesa, that's all for now. Uh, Mimi, thank you very much. Yeah, plenty on uh, that website. And uh, also at uh, bbc.com, you can find out more on our top story today. And that is uh, that series of explosions that took place in Nigeria. We understand that mass burials are now taking place. It was at an illegal oil refinery. Uh, that is it from us for today. From myself and Mimi, we will see you tomorrow. You can find us on social media though. I'm at the Quesa Burak. Cheerio. Hello, wherever you are or wherever you're going, let's see what the weather has in store over the next couple of days. We